Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show, the weekend update show actually. Hope everybody uh, is having um, a good weekend, right? You can't have a great weekend anymore, or I guess uh, not how we are uh, used to at least. But again, you have to make, uh, you definitely have to make the best of things. And um, you know, out of, I, I've been trading almost 21 years now. The last 12 years or so I've been trading at home. So for me, the transition of like self quarantine and all that stuff, it's not the, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world because, you know, I'm, more, I'm always home, you know I mean? I'm literally always home. Um, but yet today, like around three o'clock, it's like I completely ran out of things to do. Literally ran out of things to do. I played basketball already. Uh, we walked the dog twice. I ran around my property, blah, 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 blah. And I looked up, and it's, I had lunch and I looked up, it's three o'clock. I'm like, well, what the hell do I do now? But look, the bottom line is, you know, we have to be adults about this, okay? Uh, I would kill, right? I would literally kill to go to a restaurant right now, anything, to go to the mall, to, to go anywhere, like literally anywhere. But again, you always have to look at the bigger picture, right? You have to look at the bigger picture. Um, and you really do have to understand what we are up against here. And, you know, when you look at... Uh, the death toll, especially the death toll rising in Italy, especially it's 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 really uh, eye-opening how crazy it really is. And again, you know, our job is to stay safe, right? That's your only job right now. Uh, again, when you take the market out of the way, and unfortunately, uh, because what is happening here, you know, a lot of small businesses are are suffering. You know, just to, you know, um, you know, just around my town, you could just see. For the exception of supermarkets, uh, for the exception of supermarkets and pharmacies like CVS and Walgreens, uh, everything is shut, right? Everything is shut. Um, I I think the guy. I have to double check. I know New York has gone to. Um, I think New York has gone to some sort of quarantine. Pennsylvania as well, Connecticut. I think New Jersey. My son said something about. It, I haven't checked yet. Um, is going into quarantine. So again, we, we have to do what we have to do to protect our families, uh, to kind of stay safe. Um, you know, you saw all this news come out this week and the government is trying to, you know, kind of stabilize the situation, throwing uh, stimulus money around, to extending uh, the filing date for taxes from April 15th to July 15th. Even, you know, throwing the idea around of, um, you know, giving, I think it's anybody who's making less than, I forgot what the number was, 100 grand or 75 grand, giving them 1,000, uh, 1,200 bucks, whatever it is. So they're, they're trying to do everything. As much as everybody complains that, you know, everybody always has a problem. The government's doing this, the government's doing that. They're trying, okay? They're trying. Uh, you know, they're, they're trying. You know, you could turn around and say, well, they could do more. Yes, everybody, everybody, you know, I, I still have met that person who loves the government uh, in, in whole a hundred percent wholeheartedly and loves everything they do. Everybody's have an issue, but they're trying, you know, this trying, this is not something that uh, is, you know, it's not something that is an everyday occurrence. We got to make the best of it. Again, our job, stay home, please. I can't emphasize this enough. Stay home, protect your family, you know, be, you know, look at, look at the long game. Okay. Look at the long game. Like I always tell, uh, you know, especially brand new traders. It's not about, for example, what trading day you have today. It's all about what you've learned from today and what you're building for the future. So uh, again, look at the long game, forget about the short game, you know, sacrifice short term to live, right? To kind of live uh, long term. So uh, let's talk about the tape. Uh, I, I personally think, this is just my opinion. Um, I think a lot of people in the live webinar would, would definitely agree with me. Um, I think a lot of intraday traders Okay, uh, would agree with me as well. I personally think again, I'm not speaking from um, the long term investor point of view. Okay, forget about that. You know, if you are a buyer of Amazon, you in your you're holding on to this thing and watching this thing go down and down and then up and then down and up and down. Again, this is not really a conversation for you. Um, I again, I, I think 
from the trading aspect, okay, from the person who is uh, coming home, going home flat every single night, waking up, kind of, you know, dissecting the information in front of them based on how the futures are trading, formulating a game plan. Um, I think this is probably one of the more premium markets we're seeing. I really do. Um, you know, again, for, for me, like I said before, I work from home. I've been working from home for about 12 years. It doesn't make a difference to me, right? It, it, as much as most people are going nuts after day two, this is, you know, day two, this is week two plus of my, my, my family's self-quarantine lockdown. So it's not mentally as hard for me as it is, like, for example, as a person who commutes every day and then trying to figure out what things to do. And the most amazing part is we trade channels. That's the whole point of the PS60 theory. We trade channels. So the idea of coming home flat every single night and trading channels, this is nothing new to us. And that's the whole point. Uh, this is nothing new to us. Um, range expansion is what we look for. Okay, That's what we look for uh, every single day. Uh, the bigger the range, obviously, the more potential. Um, the better liquidity, obviously, is more advantageous. But again, I'm not a child. I understand less participants means, means less, less liquidity. So I always have to tear down my size on a lot of these trades because, again, you're not going to get the liquidity you want. And if you get the liquidity you want, you don't want it because, again, any dip in the future, especially if you're trading alongside, any dip in the future is going to result in a very, very ugly situation for you. So you really don't want to play that game as well. So I've been tearing down. I've been responsible. Um, and every single day, we're, we're getting some really, really good uh, opportunities. And what's blowing my mind, you know, you know, I'll, you know I, I'll show you guys in a few minutes. Uh, if you go through my Twitter feed or, you know, even the private Twitter feed, you know, guys have been trading for a year, year and a half, two years. They're having really, really good success because, again, they don't know anything. They, excuse me, I don't want to take the back. They don't know what bad habits are. So if they started with me on a fresh slate, okay, all they know is trading ranges as normal, okay? So they don't know anything about holding multiple day uh, positions that are against you. It's all about ranges, it's all about confirmation ranges and waiting. So for them, they're starting out in a market that although is very, very aggressive, and again, I don't wanna minimize how difficult it can be, right? Um, but the, at the same time, this is what we do. This is kind of our, uh, our specialty. This is kind of what we want uh, every single day. Again, taking liquidity uh, out of the equation. So for us, this is normal. So I, I go back to a person who is not an intraday trader, is not uh, somebody who takes advantage of price action, whether they're long or short in the middle of a session, to somebody that is, well, trading longer term. And, you know, it, it really is a concern it really is because again a lot of people I you know every update I keep on getting the same question is this the bottom then is this the bottom then again guys stop looking for the bottom okay um, it, again if you look at it from the point from the technical point of view again we've been talking about this 160 level on the weekly chart in the queues for for weeks okay before this market could can stabilize anywhere okay anywhere of stabilization we have to test that bottom range. That there's, there's no, there's no, you know, there's, it's not a, it's not a discussion for debate. This is what has to happen. This is the longest term trend line that we can find, the longest term support. So with us at least challenging that longer term support, that longer term trend line, it's impossible to call a bottom. Again, it's like the old theory, and I've used this example over the years. You know, th this isn't a cartoon. That the wily e. coyote is gonna is going to drop an anvil, uh, right? Drop an anvil on the roadrunner, and the anvil is gonna stop midstream, right before it hits the roadrunner, and then go magically go up. It doesn't happen that way, okay? In real life, things have to test levels, okay? It's the, it's a, again, it's a very very important aspect of technical analysis. Will they hold the level? Will they will they uh, reclaim the level? Will they break the level? Start building? These are things to be determined, but at least technically understand there is a, med a, a method to the madness of where a bottom pull, you know, can, can be, uh, can be um, at least acknowledged, okay, at least acknowledged. I personally think, and again, I've been saying this every day, you're, you're not going to see anything even close to a bottom until the country goes completely quarantined, completely, talking about not leaving your house or, you know, just exercising 
that everything has to be mandatory lockdown. Right now we're looking at like four states. Okay, as far as I know, there's a little bit more than four states uh, in the union. So we, 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 that needs to happen. Um, I think, you know, I, I think based on what we're hearing and what we're seeing and this, that, and the third, we have a lot of room down. I mean, we have, I mean, the Qs are 170, right? We need to at least get to 160. Okay, so you could do the percentages on that. Uh, the Dow, if, if you look at the numbers, if you look at the, the numbers uh, this week, the Dow is down 17.5%, right? This week, 17.5%. The diamonds have gone from 300 to one, 191 in one, two, three, four, five weeks, right? Five weeks. So yeah, we we have more room to go. Okay, and this is you know, and this is a very, uh, and this is a very grim reality, right? And if you look at the monthly chart of the Dow, now we're talking about 151. So for the market, right, for the Dow Jones to test any type of long-term intervals. You're going to see at least a 15,000 test. Okay, we're at 19,000. The way we're running right now, that could happen in four days. So can you potentially have at least a generational bottom at least tested? Give it till next week, right? Who knows? Maybe we're having a different conversation uh, the start of next week. But again, these are levels that you need to understand they're there, right? Look at the spies. Okay, look at the spies. Look, look where they, I mean, the spies need to get down to 168. They're still at 228. So again, we're not at the bottom. If you're a longer term trader and you love a position, at least have these things take place. Number one, test those ter ter uh, certain levels. That's number one. Number two, you also need every state in the union to go on lockdown. Okay, that's another sign. We're going get, to get at least close. And number three, we need to see at least a stabilization, okay? We can't have deaths in the world, you know, like for example in Italy, 500 today, 800 tomorrow, 1400 the next day. You need some sort of stabilization. Whether you believe China or not, that they've kind of flatlined, that they're starting to open up store, South Korea, whatever the case may be. If you believe what they're saying, then the, then the idea of, of, of operation lockdown is real. So I don't know why we're not doing this yet, right? I understand on the state level, states are taking the necessary precaution to do so. That's great. But why isn't everybody doing so, okay? That's the biggest question. If, if the blueprint is lock everybody down for a month, right? Lock everybody down for a month and a half. Yeah, we'll go stir crazy. We'll watch everything on Netflix. We'll probably kill, you know, kill each other in the process being home, right? Maybe go a little stir crazy. But hey, guess what? We'll be alive. So that has to, that has to occur. We have to go in completely operational lockdown. Stores have to completely, I mean, you know, you see every single day. This one is closing down stores. That one's closing down stores. Everybody has to close down for the exception of pharmacies, right? For the exception of pharmacies, for the exception of uh, supermarkets. Again, nobody wants to see small business go away. Okay. That's not what it's about. But again, we need to live guys. We can't die. None of it, your, your, your slow, your, your small business surviving is only good if you're alive. So sometimes you have to do things to secure your future. So when I tell a new trader, for example, again, don't use this whole weekend to watch 19 episodes of Narcos, right? Look at charts, man. You want to get better, okay? You're only, you know, again, especially if you're, if you're unfortunately going to be unemployed uh, or fortunately home because every business is pretty much making everybody work from home. Again, you have two ways to make money right now. Go online to either some sort of online casino, okay? Or if you're already in the trading game, you know, this is the time to, to you know, this is the time to get better, okay? This is the time to get better. This is the absolute, in my opinion, one of the better day trading, right? Day trading environments you're going to have if you come in flat because the ranges are so ridiculous. Stocks that are oversold, uh, if they catch a bid, they put on good moves. I'll talk about, uh, you know, I'll talk about the cruise ships uh, in a few minutes from Friday session, but every single day you're getting good opportunities. But again, you have to, again, long-term, think long-term, use this opportunity wisely, use this time of you know self-quarantine wisely again you know narcos is going to be there tonight okay 
Put in two hours a day. What, what else are you doing? Like, what are you doing today? You know, after you've, you, you know, after you've had your exercise, after you had your breakfast, you had your lunch, you played your kids, you played your dogs, right? You, you play, you've done everything un, humanly possible under the sun to entertain yourself. It's time to put in some work. And I, I've said this so many times now, again, you don't realize it now. If you're a trader for two, three years, you don't realize it now. This is the greatest time in your life to cement your foundation going forward. It's just the reality, okay? No picture of a Lamborghini, no picture of an airplane, no picture of stacks of cash is gonna make you a better trader. It's not motivational, it's bullshit, okay? Look at charts, okay? Even, again, I've said this a million times, even if you don't know what the hell you're looking at, when you're going through repetition, you go back to charts, right? Look to, you know, you start scrolling back to the time to charts. See how a stock got from point A to point B. You'll start seeing a lot of similarities. That's the, that was the whole point, how I found these pivots in, in the first place, how I developed the PS60 theory. I realized there was irregularities. Why did I do this? Because again, the market that I was trading, the method that I was trading earlier stopped working, right? It stopped working. This was eight and a half years ago. So I had to find a better way. The only way you're ever going to put yourself in a situation that you're going to seed in anything, okay, is anything is put in that, you know, that put in that, that background work. You have to do it. Okay. You have to put in that work or else again, what do we, you know, what are you in this for? Right? Again, I could give you pivots till you're blue in the face. If you don't understand the moving parts in these pivots and why a stock is stopping where it does, it's like me turning around on Friday and say, Hey guys, Tesla has room, you know, could reach that channel of 475, 477, you know, right? When the stock's at 465, if you don't understand why I'm using that level, this is the high of the day of, of, of Friday. Again, you're, you're cheating your learning development, okay? And, and again, if, if you're not taking this business seriously, just get out, okay? This isn't a, this isn't a hobby. This isn't a part-time business, right? This isn't something that you, if you, if you have an extra 20 minutes a week, you, you know, you dedicate to, this is it, you know? So again, I can't emphasize how important it is this time that you have the ability to sit down in front of your computer, look at charts, include all these indexes that I'm looking at, including all these moving averages, supply zones, all these silly charts. Hey Dan, how can we have all these silly, all these silly lines? Yeah, there's a reason for it. Um, so again, stay safe get to work. Okay. It's only going to make you a better trader, more disciplined trader and a smarter trader. Uh, hopefully knock on wood, eventually when all this stuff kind of goes away, hopefully knock on wood, cross fingers. So, uh, again, let's talk about Friday's session. Uh, again, very aggressive, a very, very aggressive session. Uh, this whole week was very aggressive. And, and the funny thing about Friday's session was I really liked the action from Thursday and for Friday, I actually made a watch list, right? I actually made a watch list for Friday. And I said, wow, this is the first watch list I've made of a daily pivot watch the whole month since all this. We've been just trading channels. We've been literally waking up in the morning. As you get, if you've been watching this broadcast, uh, waiting for the gap down, right? Waiting for the channels to confirm to the upside and, 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 and taking flow I and mean, basically rinse repeat every single day. So Thursday going into Friday, I actually made a watch list. And I said, wow, there's actually some value here. And the problem is you wake up, you know, you wake up Friday and you see the futures are gapping up, not a big gap up, but before I even woke up, everything was out. You know, Roku gaps up to 80, uh, TLRY gapped up to 450. Again, you couldn't trade any of these things. Uh, NVIDIA, 226. NSU, I, I didn't remember. Uh, Workday was like 132, 133. So I was like, all right, this is all you know done. So again, if you watch this broadcast, I always say any gap ups, the value is always to the downside. The problem was because the value was so strong the previous day, and I thought there was a possible second day rally, when these things gapped up and started coming back down, everything was stuck in the middle of the range, right? So if you look at it right here and says, guys, everything is literal in the middle of the ranges, sit tight, okay? We might have a contracting session, which would have been great, okay? Which a contracting session, if we would have had a very, very slow Friday and the market would have stood up 100, down 100, something like that, it would have been great because slowly but surely, it showed that traders were legitimately starting to get numb to the headlines. The problem was, again, as we all know, the market sold off nearly a thousand points at the end of the day, which is, again, was good action for Friday. And we'll get to that in a second. But long term, again, we're still in that spin cycle of massive range, 
uh, expansion for overnight futures and intraday ranks, which is, again, is more evidence we're not even close uh, to a bottom. So again, I said short-term bad, obviously long-term good, it means volatility is dying out, stay good, stay, uh, stay, uh, stay patient. So the day started out, I didn't do a single thing for the first 45 minutes. Not a thing, okay, not a thing. I turned around and I said, look, we had a very, very good week. If everything sits in the middle of the channel, it's all good, right? It's all good. Worst case, we'll start on Monday. And the greatest thing about being an experienced trader, okay, you're not trading because the market's open, okay? You're trading because you have a value. So I started putting pivots in, okay? I started putting these pivots, and I just wanted to see what could confirm. So the first couple of pivots I started putting in, uh, CCL 1180 second entry. Again, for all you guys who trade the PS60 theory, you know what that means. Uh, CCL 1180 second entry. RCL 25, 75, 26 needs to build. And again, the, the worst stocks, okay, the worst stocks, and again, the worst stocks right now are anything to do with travel, leisure, anything in between. Um, no matter how bad they are, they're always going to have some intervals that you can make very, very good money in. And CCL, you know, here was the 1180 pivot, right? Here was the 11, uh, excuse me, here's the 1180 pivot. Everybody see that? This first candle in the supply and they got rejected, right? So you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven candles. You had seven hours of distribution. And again, I said right here, look, 1180, right? 1180, uh, if it starts building, it's gonna go. So 1180 and Cardinal Cruise Lines went to 1367. Huge move, huge move. Uh, RCL, right, RCL, the same, it was the same chart. I said, basically again, um, here, here's RCL, uh, 25, 75, 26 needs to build. Uh, RCL just exploded, went to 28. Okay, so slowly but surely things started waking up. Then I put, you know, 124 and Walmart needs to build, build never got there. But again, you could see, you know, the, these are the names I'm, I'm not usually trading, but again, they're starting to wake up and that's the key. You're starting to wake up bad groups in a bad market for cash flow potential. That's a good sign. Again, Let's take the 900 point decline at that end, kind of out of it. Again, we, we, we weren't there yet. Um, so the cruise ships woke up. Walmart didn't do anything. Roku never got to the 80-20, but I'll show you a sneakier pivot on that. Uh, crowd never got to 51.50 on the earnings. So things started, you know, things were like, well, you know, things are slower, 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 blah, blah, blah. Let's see which what happens. So this is where the day really, really started, right? So for all you guys who took the cruise ships, I didn't trade the cruise ships. They're just not really my thing. Uh, I actually traded them a couple weeks ago out of pure desperation because nothing was going on one day, but it's not really my thing. So for all you guys who did take a great job. So I started out with the video, right? And I, I traded in the video this whole week. It was, the video has been a great trader this week. And Zoom, Zoom has been a fantastic trader this week. So uh, NVIDIA, rejection twice, 228 needs to build. So here was NVIDIA, here was my first trade of the day. Uh, excuse me, I actually was in, I was actually in NVIDIA and Apple at the same time. I forgot to put in the Apple, I actually forgot to put in the Apple pivot in the private feed. I only made like 20, 30 cents out of it because it was just too crazy. I, had, I, I, I was trading both of these things at the same time and I said, you know, I just can't handle the risk. Let me get out of Apple and Apple, you know, ran up like maybe a dollar, no, not even a dollar, maybe like 80 cents before it sold off. But I sold that to concentrate on the video. So here is NVIDIA. Here's the 60 minute channel on NVIDIA. Here is the 228 right here. You see this guys, 228, 228, 228. It finally busted out 228. And my highest sale was like uh, 230 in the teens. So it was good. It was a really good trade. And then obviously it stopped short of the, the next pivot of 231. And again, this is why you need to know where stocks are gonna stall out, where stocks are gonna stop. So uh, NVIDIA was really good cash flow. Uh, Roku, Roku, uh, Roku exploded, right? Roku exploded here. Um, Roku 281, oh, I did put in, I'm sorry. I did put in the Apple pivot, I thought I didn't. Um, so Roku 7850 needs to build. So here was Roku, uh, here was a 78, Ro 7850 pivot right here on Roku, right here, 7850, right, 7850. Went right to this uh, $80 level. Again, stopped at the next supply zone. Uh, so yeah, Apple, I was in the same time as NVIDIA. Very, very scary being in two beta, two beta names at the same time because you have to watch the futures. You have to watch both of these stocks. I'm not getting any younger. So 251 needs to build. So I get long Apple. Uh, I get long Apple right here. So the 251, uh, I get long Apple. And it ran up like 50 cents, right? Ran up at 50 cents and it came in right away. I mean, right away, very aggressively. 
and it came in a little bit below my entry, like I'm talking about in seconds. So I gave it like a minute. It's it spiked up again into the like the 251 30s. And I was like, you know what? It just looks weak. I, I sold some. Uh, I sold some and the rest like I broken even. So I, I made a little bit of money on, you know, nothing, you know, like, a tw like 25 cents on it. But it came in and started coming in aggressively. So two very, very aggressive move, two very aggressive stocks at the same time is a lot mentally. Again, I know, I know for all you guys who do trade, uh, uh, do trade beta, you understand how two of these things at one time is, you could lose five years off your life. So again, uh, small move on Apple. Uh, NVIDIA, great move on NVIDIA. Uh, take some on the way up. It just, again, just wasn't, it wasn't big enough. So here's the move on, on, on Tesla. You can see like everything started waking up at the same time. So 465, 464, 465 needs to build. And I, I said, if you look at the comments here, right? Good job for CCL, RCL, blah, blah, blah. Good job for uh, Roku selling the way up. Uh, oh, Netflix, before, before we get into Tesla. So here's the funny part about Netflix. So there was a pivot 47.65, right? It goes to 50, okay? It goes to 50. So here's 47.65, okay? And it goes to 50.49, right? It's all good, $3 move. For some reason in my brain, I was so tired already, I thought three, I, for whatever reason, I thought the second entry on Netflix was not three, uh, 348. For some reason I thought it was 349. So I get long a dollar thirty above the pivot. Don't ask me why. And the stock goes up another like 80, 90 cents. The problem is that I don't get filled on any type of size. So I'm up like 80, 90 cents in the position. And then it dawned on me. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Why am I in the stock a dollar thirty? Why am I in the stock a dollar thirty above the pivot? I got so tired. I got very lucky. So it started coming down, as you can imagine, with the rest of the future. So I wound up making like 50 cents in the trade. But it's amazing how, again, sometimes you get very, very lucky because I, 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 would have been, I should have been making sales where I bought it, not, not buying it. So I got very, very lucky there. Uh, but here's kind of my comments on, um, here's my comments on, yeah, everything is going up at once. Uh, so here's my comments on, um, on Tesla. Where's my comments on Tesla? Um, did I not put on my comments on Tesla? Yeah, so I thought Tesla, I think maybe I put it in my, in my regular account. So 470, yeah, so here's my point. So 464, um, where the hell is it? Um, 464, 465, right? 464, 465 on Tesla. Here it is. Uh, needs to build. And I knew it was going to stop at the upper Bollinger Band. because That's again, that's how stocks trade. So here is Tesla. Here's a 60 minute view on Tesla. Uh, here is the 465 right here, right? Here's the 465 right here. And once it exploded, it went right to the, the upper Bollinger Band of 477. Good job uh, for all you guys who caught that as well. Uh, so the day started out slow. You know, the day started out slow and it got good very, very quickly. And here's kind of my point. You know, here's kind of my point of newer traders, right? Like, you know, these are newer traders. These aren't guys who have been with me. I mean, there's some people in the live webinar who have been with me for 10 years. Right, these are guys that have not been with me for ten years. These guys have been like really new to traders. You know, and it's, in the, it's just not even with them. It's just you know, I have I do have a good share of new traders in the webinar, and I'm hearing the same thing. You know, which is which is amazing because again, whatever process you're trading, right? Whatever process you're trading, you have to make sure that you're comfortable. Okay, kind of block everything out omit the nonsense, omit, omit the noise, just really concentrate on technical analysis and market sentiment. And I think no matter what type of trader you are, okay, if you really let go of everything else and really focus on what you're doing, you could be very, very successful. Again, these, some of these, you know, these guys have been trading probably, this gentleman's probably trading a year, I mean, smaller account, but great, I mean, great job. Um, Sean, I think has been trading for a couple of years, but, but, but the point is stay disciplined. Okay. Trade when there's value. Okay. Understand when the market has beaten you for the day. Okay. You don't need to lose a lot of money to figure out this is not your day. Some of the best, some of the best days that I kind of cut myself off. I've been up a little bit of down a little bit, like a little bit of paper cuts or whatever the case may be. It's always about what you could accomplish tomorrow versus what you can try to squeeze out today. Very, very important. So guys, 
understand this guys it's all about life right now okay it's survival it's happiness okay it's about our family stock market will be here okay it'll be here next week it'll be here the week after it'll be here 500 years down the road assuming we don't all die i'm kidding i'm kidding you gotta laugh right at some point you gotta laugh i'm kidding so god bless everybody stay safe and with god's help i'll see you all next week take care congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading you're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.